the road. Oh, what's up, buddy? Hey, dude. Whew, you're here. Oh my God, I've been waiting. I'm so excited to keep going on this electrical system, man. We got some really cool stuff today. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Well, first of all, I got some plates welded in. Everything's gonna get mounted in here. And then ultimately, this will get covered in with a piece of aluminum and uh, riveted down and we'll caulk up all the joints so it's nice and watertight. And then from last time, we had our little alternator mix up. It's backwards? It's exactly backwards. Which ended up being not as big of a mix up as I thought. Let me just show you. So I rectified our issue. It turns out that I didn't have the alternator mounted backwards. I was just testing it improperly with my multimeter. So I was getting zero reading, but what I found out is you won't get a reading unless there's some kind of load on your alternator. I'll probably do a deep dive on that at some point because I've learned a lot in the last 48 hours. But I still had to take everything out and completely reimagine the design of the attachment of that alternator because as we pointed out before, I had the alternator hard mounted to the actual engine plate. That's a problem because our chain tension is adjusted by how we mount the engine. The engine has four bolts in it and they're on slides. So what we do is we get our chain on have everything connected and then I pull the engine towards the back of the cart in order to put the correct amount of tension on the chain. And with the alternator installed, it wasn't gonna allow me to slide the engine anymore. So that was no good. So instead, I fabbed up this little bracket for the time being with what we had. <laughs> That's actually part of the old engine plate from this cart. You can see right here. I've been reusing everything, every part of the Buffalo. I cut this strip off and used that U-steel to build this bracket to hold in the alternator. So now the alternator is completely supported only from the engine plate from Go Power Sports and allows us to move everything around really nicely and it's installed properly and it's working and we have good belt tension and I'm really happy. I don't think I'm gonna run a voltage regulator on this one, but I think for our application, we're gonna run the alternator directly to the battery just to charge the battery. And then we'll run all the accessories off of a big, thick six or eight gauge wire that'll run off the battery, down along the chassis, and then up into here. And then all of our power will be tapping in up front. So we won't have to run a million wires back to the battery like we did on Big Bob's car. Again, it's been a learning process all the way through. We're finding better ways to do stuff and taking you guys along for the ride. So it's been really cool. Hey man, that's a, that's a nice shirt you got. Thanks buddy. Nice shirt. You can't see, but he's got the same one. A little Christmas present from Big Bob. You wanna talk about merch someday? Carhartt, buddy? These things are no joke. Yeah, they're not messing around. We're, we're toasty in here. Yeah, that's right. Let's start wiring some stuff up. You read my mind. All right. Got my whole box of goodies here. I've got us a nice little fuse box here. We're gonna fuse all of our circuits. I'm probably gonna just roughly place these for now with some double-sided tape. That way I can move things around if I need to once I make the actual shroud for this. But I'm just really excited to get the wiring done and have this thing be all charged up. We got a relay and what a relay does is basically this switch is going to actuate a higher amperage rating switch inside of this relay. So the switch allows me to turn the relay on and then the relay allows me to push all the power through this, which is rated for a higher amperage than our switch is and allows me to not have to run that much current through the switch itself. So we'll mount that somewhere in here and then clean up all of our grounds. I've got these really nice sort of terminal blocks and so all of our grounds will go to this and then we'll make a really nice uh, ground where I'll maybe rivet it in down to the plate here. What else do we got? It's like Christmas. Circuit breaker, power from the battery is gonna come right up here to this circuit breaker. And then the circuit breaker will run a wire to our fuse box and then from the fuse box, everything will kind of go out from there. So that's gonna be really nice. And again, this is just so that if we get some kind of large surge of power, this circuit breaker will break and reset. It's a nice little safety feature. I've also got these little latching button switches, which are gonna actuate our blinkers. So I'm actually gonna set up blinkers on this and that'll be a terrain tip in and of itself how to set up a circuit for blinkers because that's gonna be really cool. We're gonna do it with two switches. Another way you could do it is with a three position switch. We'll go over both of those in a later video. But these are gonna get mounted up here 
where the stock kill switch would have gone. And so now, you'll have left blinker and right blinker on the other side. And then, to take it even a step further so that we know when our blinker is on from inside the cabin, I bought these little indicator lights, which I'm gonna mount up on top by the steering column. And then, to make our blinkers blink, flasher relays. So the flasher relay will go in front of the power to our actual blinkers. But like I said, that's worthy of its own video because I think blinkers are pretty cool and gets us one step closer to, I don't know, making these street legal. But blinkers would be fun, especially in the trails. We don't have great comms back and forth between carts. So to be able to sort of communicate a little bit better is gonna be nice. I've also got this. This is a spring actuated switch. And what this is gonna be for is so that we can run brake lights. We'll have running lights where they're just dimly lit red whenever the cart is on. And then when you step on the brakes, they'll actually show that we're braking, which would be really nice. And then in addition to that, I'm also gonna hook these up to be my rear turn signals. So rear turn signals, we'll have the ability to have those flash with the flashers. And then the front turn signals are just gonna be the front headlights, those orange rings like we talked about. So we'll see how far we get today, but that's all the stuff that we're putting in and it's gonna be really, really fun. I've been really waiting on this one. I know I've said that three times, but can you tell I'm excited? A little bit. Just to keep this all easy and let me get through it in a way that's efficient, I think we'll just kind of shoot all this as pretty much B-roll and then I'll break it out into a bunch of Tyrannus tips later and we can get into the nitty gritty of this because I know there's been a lot of people asking for electrical tips. The electrical stuff can be a little bit mystifying if you don't play with it all that often. Hopefully we'll be able to make it a little less scary. You wanna get into it? Let's do it, bro. Yeah.
Go again. Yeah. That's both of them. Work your magic. Work, work your magic, baby. Call it a bit. You got me captive. We can Whoa, dude, hold up. Chill. They're not supposed to see that yet. That's a surprise, dude. Shh. Oh, might be, might be. All right. We got it basically wired up. But now we need fuses, and I don't have any in here, so we're gonna steal some from my car. <laughs> we need big fuses. We're going under the hood. Bridget's been here. <laughs> wow, these are all the little baby fuses. We need the wide ones, but I think Brittany's car has some, so we'll go steal some from her car. Oh my God, everything uses tiny fuses, man. Where have I been? Last ditch effort. Still tiny. Okay. This wasn't supposed to be a cliffhanger. Just one of those days. Just one of those days. I checked all of our vehicles and they're all those little tiny fuses and we need full size blade fuses, which I'm hoping that they still make in really low amperages because that's what we're gonna need. That's what I get for trying to be legit, you know? I don't get to show you guys the whole working McCoy, but what I can show you is this. On our fuse box, you can see that there's those little lights here. These will light up when you have a blown fuse, but what they'll also do is show me that my switches and power is in fact working. So, let's go ahead. I'm gonna turn on my accessory power. Accessory power is on. Then if we go to our high beams, you can see that those light up on fuse six. It's our high beams, so we are getting power to them. And then down low for our low beams, those are on fuse one, so we need a fuse there. And then over here, we've got our ring lights. Those are on fuse eight, so we're getting power to fuse eight. And then of course, our push to start, and so you can see that lighting up as I press it down there on fuse 10. So we're getting power to everything. And if it weren't for these fuses, everything would work. The relays require power to the relay itself and power to the switch. There'd be a lot of juggling going on and I don't feel like frying anything today or anything else, I should say. There were some off-camera mishaps that we're not gonna talk about. Now, obviously, nothing has been attached to the actual chassis yet, because I've been just trying to figure out exactly how I'm gonna need everything. I'm definitely gonna need to find a place for my flasher relay, which will probably maybe get nestled right in here. This will all be cleaned up, be able to point to things and show you guys exactly how I did it. We didn't get to the brake lights, but I can show you where I'm gonna put them. Here's our brake lights and those. I'm gonna get mounted here and here. So some sweet tail lights back here. That's gonna be awesome. And then the only other thing that we talked about that we didn't get a chance to actually wire in today is our alternator is gonna get wired in to charge the battery, but I want some slightly heavier gauge wire than I have right now, so I'm gonna wait on that. I could use the really thick stuff, but that's just overkill. So we're moving right along. I would have loved to have had these things all lit up for y'all today, but baby steps. Watch, Trey, as soon as you leave, I'm gonna find a fuse like in my back pocket or something. Like I said, we learn as we go, so taking y'all along for the ride. I think that's about all I got for today, man. I'm ready to call it. All right, let's get out of here. Woo! Oh, look what I found. <laughs> we got a 30 amp and a 15. That's more than our alternator makes and almost as much as our, our alternator. Yeah, I can't speak bro, I'm so excited. All right, so we only got two fuses, so we're gonna have to test things one at a time. But I've got fuses one and two in for our high beams. We've got our auxiliary power is on, high beams. There we go, top and bottom. Now. 
try our low beams. Low beams appear to still be high beams, so I'll fix that later. Check the rings. Rings work. Nice. And starter. Yeah, buddy. Woo. Okay, so still not perfect. We got a little bit of work to do to figure out what I mixed up in trying to jury rig this for y'all. Trey, you saw me. I was pacing all over the place, freaking out. We couldn't show him the lights in the end of this video. Well, we showed him the lights, Bob. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Alright, I've made Trey re-unpack his gear three times now, but this is important and I know why I can't use my low beams the way I want. It's because I did something dumb and I'll show you what it is. And that is that I'm trying to basically run one relay for the low beams, one relay for the high beams, but they're both jumpered across each other. And I know it looks stupid and I should have thought of it immediately, but I'm just feeding, either one that turns on is feeding power to the light bar and the lights down low. So what I think I need, and I'm hoping maybe one of you in the comments can tell me what this is because I am not an electrician. Something that I can put in line here that will allow electricity to flow but only in one direction. So, like a, not a diode, I have no idea what it is. If you can tell me what that is, if you know, leave it in the comments or if you've got a better idea of how I can get my three position switch here, which is just single pull in either direction to run on low beams, just the low beams, and on high, the low beams and the light bar up top. So if anybody's got any ideas, drop those down in the comments. I'm hoping to have it figured out by next video, but if y'all can help me out, that would be great too. So appreciate y'all. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.